So I was having my blood drawn prior to a physical examination, and the technician, who did beautiful work, was telling me that she was reading Grimm's fairy tales and enjoying it very much. She narrated one of them in telling detail, and as a result, I got a copy of their work, the original two volumes in one book. Over the years, many editions of the tales were published, with one of the brothers especially expanding and embellishing them. I wanted to read the first unadulterated edition. In their preface to that book, the brothers wrote, Here we have a case where all the accomplishments of education, refinement, and artistic command of language ruin everything, and where one feels that a purified literary language, as elegant as it may be for everything else, brighter and more transparent, has here, however, become more tasteless and can't get to the heart of the matter. They also wrote, It is easy to observe that the custom of storytelling has stuck where poetry has enjoyed a lively freedom and where the imagination has not yet been obliterated by the perversities of life. Here is what I came away with after reading these tales. Many of them seem to be parables, secular parables. As I was reading them, I thought, these are all about karma. And then I thought, they couldn't be about karma. Karma is based in the Far East. They must be about um, kismet. And then I wondered, what is kismet exactly? And is it different from karma? Kismet is fate, a force that controls what will happen in the future. When something occurs in your life wholly by chance, yet it seems it was meant to be, they say it must be kismet at work, your destiny. Karma is cause and effect at work in your life. Because of your actions, certain things occur in your life. It's no accident. They arise because of your behavior in the past. That's karma. Obviously, there is good karma and bad karma. And it was karma that I felt was at work in the tales. There are many stories among the tales that really and truly begin with once upon a time. And that has a pleasing effect, I think. One had this. Once upon a time, there was a fisherman who lived in a piss pot near the sea, and were off. Some of the tales are very harsh and bleak. Often these involve no animals or magic or fairies, and they read like newspaper reports. Bad advice can destroy any situation, and there is no shortage of bad advice. Character is everything. This goes back to karma. There are many transformations in these tales. People transform into animals or things, and for example, a frog may become a prince. In this way, the tales reminded me of the Metamorphosis by Ovid, except that book was filled with gods. The forest can be a very scary place. Forests were cleared in this country both to establish good farmland and because they were frightful places. The tales often declare that the last shall be first, and vice versa. Don't be afraid, or at least master your fear. Keep your promises. Joy is largely a solitary achievement, or may be shared by a couple. Trouble seems to be at large and highly contagious. A naive person may prosper against all odds, but not a fool. The best combination is to be clever and brave. There are a lot of kings and princesses in these tales. Also people who are very poor, as in they had just barely enough to lead a miserable life. We meet many witches and stepmothers in these tales. Some tales, like Briar Rose or Sleeping Beauty and Little Snow White, have great depth and an epic feel to them. It's easy to see why they were chosen for production by Walt Disney. The ability to make wishes come true is granted to toads and hunchbacks. If a talking fox gives you some advice, do exactly as he says. I thought a lot about the word enchantment. 
Curiosity killed a lot more than the cat. Kindness is rare and is frequently rewarded. Simpletons may triumph where clever men have failed. People may live happily for the rest of their lives, but no one lives happily ever after. There are lots of threes. Three sons, three daughters, three wishes, three tasks, three feathers. Mercy and pity can be powerful forces. Beauty in women can be a treasure, as it so often is in life. It can also be misleading. 